Hey guys, and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory, we're going to be talking about the critical engine. So what is a critical engine? Well, a critical engine is the engine which, if it failed, would cause the biggest yawing moment. So essentially, the engine you least want to fail. Now, in a two-engine propeller-driven aircraft, with the engines being symmetrically mounted, you would say, well, why is there a critical engine? This is because of the asymmetric blade effect, otherwise known as the P-factor, which I'm going to explain to you. In our little sketch here of our aircraft, we have two engines, one mounted on each wing, both with two propellers. These are clockwise rotating engines. The thrust vector is actually larger on the downgoing propeller, essentially the right one in these clockwise rotating propellers. As it's coming down, it comes down on the right side and generates more thrust than the upgoing propeller on the left. Why is this? Because of asymmetric blade effect, which I'll explain shortly. In this situation, with a clockwise rotating twin engine propeller aircraft, the critical engine is the engine on the left. Because if this engine failed, you can see the right engine has a bigger arm, hence the yawing moment will be greater if this engine fails. If the right engine fails, of course it will yaw to the right, because this engine will push it round that way. However, as the thrust line is closer to that longitudinal axis, to the center of the aircraft, force will be lighter than if the left engine failed, yawing to the left. So essentially what you need to understand here is why that thrust line is larger on the right side on the downgoing propeller. This drawing here is what you really need to understand and I hope it's clear with the drawing here. This is a side-on view of one of the engines. That's the longitudinal axis of our aircraft. As you can see, we're slightly pitched up as we would be in a cruise, five degrees for example. That's the engine cowling. That is the propeller cowling. And here are my two propellers. The one dotted is on the far side and the one in a solid line is on this side, as you would see it from side on. As you can see, they're essentially just little wings. We have two propellers mounted and we have the free airstream, which is essentially in the opposite direction to where we're traveling. We're traveling this way, free airstream is coming this way. This would be rotating down that sort of direction, clockwise. Upcoming blade, which would be on this side, solid, cuts the free air stream almost at 90 degrees. So it has a very small angle of attack. It cuts a very small portion of the air away. As we have that angle of attack of the aircraft, as it's, the nose of the aircraft is pitched up, the downgoing blade, as you can see, cuts a much larger section of the free-flowing air. So it essentially has a larger angle of attack relative to the free-flowing air. The downgoing propeller is cutting a much bigger section out of the air than the upgoing propeller. So hence it's essentially generating more lift and hence more thrust. Put that image in your head and convert it over to here, you can then see with the free flow of air coming from here that the downgoing propeller would generate more thrust and hence the thrust line are going to be displaced to the right on both engines if they are both clockwise rotating engines. Some light piston engines have counter rotating propellers. Essentially this is two engines, one rotating to the left on the right side and one rotating to the right on the left side. Now that would bring that thrust line over to this side because this propeller would now be rotating this one. It's still the downward propeller generates more thrust, more lift. However, now the downward side would be on the here. So you would have a symmetrical thrust line relative to your longitudinal center of the aircraft. So that negates the critical engine effect. This doesn't actually happen very much in commercial aviation. It tends to be light piston, light twin piston engines that have these counter rotating engines. This is purely a commercial reason in that it's much easier to have one engine which can be replaced on any side of the aircraft. If the critical engine did fail, or any engine for that matter, we would counteract that initial movement, that initial yawing moment with the rudder. In a scenario where the critical engine fails, in this case we've already decided it's going to be the left engine, because that would generate the biggest yawing moment to the left in this case. If the left engine failed, we would lose that thrust vector. That would be non-existent anymore. That thrust vector would give us a big yawing moment to the left. How would we counteract that? We would have to change the rudder and rudder right to counteract that yawing moment, to bring that nose back to the right again. As you can see, we would be stepping on the right pedal, which is the live engine. So a phrase I like to remember is dead foot, dead engine. When you're flying an aircraft and there's an engine failure initially, your first reaction is to see the aircraft yaw to one side or the other. So your initial reaction is to press on the pedal to bring the nose back to the center. Once you've pressed on that pedal, it's a good indication without looking at any of your instruments as to which engine has failed. Because the foot you are not using, and the foot you should never press on, should be the side 
from the inoperative engine. In this case, it would have left dead leg, left dead engine. That would be my way of thinking about it. Dead foot, dead engine. You should never press on the rudder of the dead engine side on a twin engine propeller driven aircraft. You will get into a lot of trouble. I hope that's cleared up any doubts you may have had about why we have critical engines on propeller driven aircraft. This is the drawing you really need to get your head around. Why the down going propeller has more lift than the upgoing propeller. Now the big question that arises a lot, does a jet aircraft have a critical engine? Well, yes and no. Let's draw a jet aircraft quickly. Here we have a drawing of a jet. As you can see, longitudinal axis, rudder is still there, and we have two engines. The thrust vectors for both engines have exactly the same arm. They don't have the P factor, they don't have that asymmetric blade effect. They generate thrust at the same arm. So essentially, technically, there's no critical engine. If one fails, if the left side fails, it would yaw over to the left. In the same way as if the right engine failed, it would yaw over to the right at the same rate. The most dangerous of these scenarios is, of course, when we're taking off because we don't have full thrust. So that would create the biggest yaw moment. As we're hurtling down the runway, is there a critical engine? Am I thinking, is there a critical engine as I'm going down the runway? Yes, I am. The reason there is a critical engine, and I'm going to say there is a critical engine in a jet aircraft, is because of the wind. Nothing else, not the design of the aircraft, but the wind. Let's draw in some crosswind. Now we have some crosswind from the right. So what's going to happen as I'm going down the runway with my right crosswind? The aircraft is going to have a natural yawing moment into the wind. So it's naturally going to yaw over to the right. Which engine would make that right yawing moment worse? If I lost my right engine, I would have no thrust from the right anymore and the left engine would yaw me over to the right even more. So it would exaggerate that crosswind moment. So as you can see, the critical engine is the one facing the wind in a jet aircraft. It's just something for you to consider. So is there a critical engine for a jet? You decide. Yes, no, both answers are correct. As you can see from my beautiful jet aircraft drawing, it's clearly an Airbus. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. I don't hate Airbus, let's just leave that clear. I just think Boeing are prettier apart from the A350. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. All the best, till next time.